Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my May TBR. Before I forget, because one of them I don't have a physical copy of, I am buddy reading Sword of Kaigen with uh, my dad. He's already read it. I don't think he knows how a buddy read works. <laughs> So what I mean to say is I will be reading Sword of Kaigen, which my dad already read because we were gonna buddy read it. And then he just went ahead and read it, but I'm reading it now per the actual plan. <laughs> All to say that when I do read it, since he has read it, we will most likely discuss it in a video. Also, FYI, he is currently reading the Grisha trilogy and we did watch Shadow on Bone together. So we may or may not discuss that at some point as well. Anyway, um, yeah, I have fewer books on my TBR. Well, one, because they're quite long and because I keep like not finishing books that I haven't finished in previous months that I'm like, well, like I'll finish it in the next month but because it's not on the next month's TBR and my, my TBR for every subsequent month is like crammed to the gills that I never get to finish it. So like Assassin's Quest, Blue Lily Lily Blue, Northern Wrath, Elantris, like there's a few that are like leftovers from previous TBRs that I would like to actually finish <laughs> ideally. And also I would like some time to write. So I kept it to these five plus sort of Kaigen because well again this will quite likely keep me busy all month because like just look at this one just look at it. But in theory I was keeping it to less books because of aforementioned reasons. Any whoosies, let's get into the books that I do have on my TBR. The Heroes by Jo Abercrombie. As I have stated in nearly every video this year, I am rereading all of the first law books in anticipation of the release of the third and final book in the Age of Madness trilogy, The Wisdom of Crowds, which comes, which comes out in September. So next up is The Heroes, because I read Best Rip Cold last month. The Heroes is my least favorite in the world of the first law, <laughs> but I've only read it the once and I didn't know going into it that it would be so utterly plotless. I know that this time, so I suspect my enjoyment will go up because I am ready for that this time and I'm going in with lower expectations because like I remember being kind of like disappointed with it. So this time around, like I'm just kind of like in for the ride, kind of know what I'm, what's gonna be, what this is gonna be. So maybe I can enjoy it more because I won't be like, okay, but is there seriously not gonna be a plot though? Uh, so I am looking forward to it because I always look forward to just like being in the world of the first law, you know, cause it's just such a happy place to be. I'm excited, but like, we'll see, we'll see. This might be the most interesting one to review because again, the first time around I was like, really? <laughs> like literally no plot. Uh, so again, I I'm excited to kind of like, cause I've heard a lot of people say that the heroes is their favorite. Like their favorite of the standalones and possibly the favorite book in the world of the first law. And every time I hear that, I'm just like, her? <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see if my mind changes now that I'm rereading it and I know what it's gonna be this time. Next up, I have Shadow and Claw, which is the Blades and Bodice Rivers book club pick, my pick. So the live show for it will be on my channel the last Saturday of the month. And this is a bind up of the first two books in the Book of the New Sun, which is the name of this series um, that was written, I believe in the eighties by Jean Wolfe. So this is uh, Shadow and Claw is actually Shadow of the Torchbearer and Claw of the Conciliator put together. There are four in total, but they're sold as two bind ups. So yeah, mainly I want to read this because I, my understanding is that it's quite a seminal text in the SFF space that a lot of um, like well-known, famous, currently writing SFF authors cite this as like either an inspiration or as like influential or or whatever. So I'm just, I'm excited. I'm hoping to like it obviously, but I'm also like excited to just kind of like see what it's all about. Even if I don't end up enjoying it, like I think it will be, you know, for my own edification as an SFF reader, it will be, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It'll be illuminating, I guess. The text is very tiny. <laughs> So this will take me all month to read. Yeah, um, this is kind of like science fantasy as opposed to sci-fi or fantasy. I guess it won the Nebula Award, which which is, which is bodes well. And it's blurbed by Neil Gaiman, also bodes well. So yeah, I'm excited. And as I said, um, we'll be discussing it in a, the live show on my channel the last Saturday of the month. So join us. Next up is this fat ass floppy paperback, The Shadow of What Was Lost. This is the patron buddy read for the month. Um, that said, we may like continue this into June because of reasons. <laughs> I've been wanting to read this for a long, long time, mainly because the cover is orange. <laughs> like not gonna lie. It's a fantasy book with a giant orange cover. Like, of course I'm interested. I just, I haven't picked it up and my patrons are interested in reading it. So I'm excited to be kind of like, not forced, but like to have it pushed up in my TBR. Um, yeah. 
I did recently hear some less than positive things, some going into it with tempered expectations, but I, I hope it goes well. I, I mean, I do love a floppy paperback that just like stays open on your lap. Like, do love that. And an orange book is not allowed to let me down. It will be the ultimate betrayal. Next is another orange book that I'm very excited about, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. As also stated in a few videos, my plan this year to, in order to keep up with my Book of the Month Club books is to read um, each month's book of the month in the subsequent month. So this was my April book of the month. So I'm reading it in May because those are the rules that I have created. I'm excited for this because uh, my first and only Emily Henry book that I read before I also got from book of the month was Bee Tree. And I was delightfully surprised by how kind of like lit -y and serious and contemplative and heartbreakingly beautiful it was. It wasn't like, honestly, like a book called Beach Read that's a romance sounds like my worst nightmare. I wasn't going to read it. But then I learned that it doesn't actually take place at like the beach beach. It takes place in like a lake house, which like when people say Beach Read, I think they picture Ocean Beach, like Florida or California or Hawaii or something. And that is not, it is a lake, <laughs> a lake, a remote lake house. And it's about two writers who kind of like swap genres and like try writing each other's genres because they're like neighbors. And so like it's it, I just feel like the cover and the name of it is such a disservice to the book because like it, that is not the vibe of it at all. So similarly, um, even Emily Henry, uh, I really enjoyed her writing style, her prose, her voice. So like I was excited to pick up another book from her just anyway, just generally. It's orange. That bodes well. And then I've heard that this one actually leans even more towards the licky, lit ficky side of things than Beatrice did, which for me is... It's delightful to hear. I've heard this compared to When Harry Met Sally. I actually don't love that movie very much, but like I'm interested to see Emily Henry handle that type of situation or relationship. So I'm quite looking forward to this is what I'm trying to say. And last is Winter of the Witch, which I'm buddy reading with Bethany from Beautifully, Beautifully Bookish Bethany because she and I want to finally finish the Winter Night trilogy. And I'm really, really excited about this because I love Brandon Nightingale loved Girl in the Tower even more and I, all I hear is that the entire trilogy is fantastic and that each installment only gets better. And I'm also excited to like, you know, finally read, <laughs> to finally finish the trilogy. You know, it is really nice as an SFF reader to like actually finish a series. This doesn't happen nearly as often as it should. <laughs> so those are all the books that I'll be reading in May as well as hopefully polishing off some of those others slash maybe mood reading a bit. We'll see how we go. Maybe I'll just read those. Who knows? Who knows? We'll find out in my wrap up. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below all the things about the books I'll be reading. If you've read them, if you want to read them, if you plan now to read them, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.